Fifty years ago today, the Haunted Mansion opened its doors to the public. Since that day in 1969, guests have encountered all of the happy haunts countless times. Upon your tour, you enter the attic, home to a bride. She's gone through some changes over the years, but she's always been there, in one form or another. And we'll be looking through them all today. From concept art to the final attraction and everything in between, we'll be tracing her history and all of her incarnations. And when I say all of her incarnations, I mean all of her incarnations. I'm about to get obscure, so brace yourself. We'll start at the beginning. Ken Anderson's Captain Gore storyline. Anderson, a legendary animator, was put in charge of coming up with a story for a haunted house attraction. This one was as follows. Captain Bartholomew Gore was a bloodthirsty pirate who pillaged all across the seas. Eventually, though, he retired to a mansion in New Orleans, taking a wife named Priscilla, our first bride. When she discovered his past, he threw her down a well, killing her in the process. Unfortunately, she was a vengeful spirit, tormenting him until he took his own life in the annex rafters. Though, of course, the story never made it to the ride, Priscilla is ground zero for the Haunted Mansion Bride character. Captain Gore has a legacy all his own, but that's a story for another day. Ken Anderson wrote more than just the Gore story, however. One of his revisions was about a wedding between an undead bride and her groom, hosted by the Lonesome Ghosts. The bride was called Mademoiselle Vampire and the groom Monsieur Boogeyman. Her wedding was attended by famous monsters like Dracula, Frankenstein's monster, and the Headless Horseman. But she rejected her groom, causing chaos at the reception. What little we know about her is scattered throughout several versions of the story. I have heard of her attached to the Bloodroom Manor story a few times, but it goes to show that the story of a mansion has always involved a bride. The bride concept was revisited throughout concept art drawn by various Imagineers working on the attraction. This piece is by Mark Davis, of a figure in white with a dark face and glowing eyes. Though not specifically depicting a bride, the way her costume is is very bride-esque. This piece is of a ghost standing on a staircase in front of a door. The line work is a bit messy and hard to make out, but there appears to be a veil behind them and their hands are clasped together as if it's holding a bouquet. So sure, let's just say it's a bride. The bride idea eventually stuck and finally made its way into the mansion proper. The earliest incarnation of the physical bride is believed to be this one, resembling another Mark Davis piece. As you can see, she is a skeleton, meaning some fans to nickname her the Corpse Bride. No, not that one. Her heart glowed red, accompanied by a heartbeat that could be heard throughout the scene. This was carried over until all future incarnations of the character, leading to another nickname, the Beating Heart Bride. It's unknown how long this bride lasts in the attraction, but she was there on opening day until at least the mid-70s on both Walt Disney World and Disneyland. She sat on the left side of the doom buggy halfway through the attic, but once the hatbox ghost was removed, she was moved to his spot, which is on the right side of the attic near the exit. In the late 70s, the bride got her first of many overhauls. In this version, her face was completely black, and the only thing you could see were her glowing eyes. This called back to the Mark Davis concept art I mentioned earlier, but also to some artwork from an LP. The Haunted Mansion, see, read here. Not to be confused with Song and Story of the Haunted Mansion, but we'll get to that. The accompanying book depicts her with a dark face and glowing eyes. I don't know to what extent this influenced the design, if at all, but the connection is there. She remained for the rest of the decade at both Florida and Anaheim, until sometime in the 90s, where she was given a face up. As in, she was given an actual face. In Anaheim, she was given a sweet face, and she was a little less scarier than before. Though eventually, the veil was pulled over her face, which gave her a little bit of mystery. In Florida, the change was a little shakier. They constantly reworked and retuned her facial features, never really settling on a single design. Also, she was blue, leading to some fans to nickname her the Smurf Bride. Between the two of them, most fans prefer the Anaheim incarnation, and yeah, I agree. You won't see me preferring a Disneyland version of anything very often, but I will concede this. Also added in the scene were popping heads, either screaming or saying I do, depending on what mansion you're at. Tokyo Disneyland's mansion opened with the park in 86, and to my knowledge, hasn't changed since opening day. This bride is a little hard to track, and I haven't found any pictures or video of her before the 2000s. So, if you know anything about her, please let me know down in the comments, because I came up with nothing. Anyway, from what I understand, the bride that currently sits in the mansion is the same one that was there on opening day. And her design kind of follows the face-up bride. Glowing eyes, red glowing heart, and a candlestick. If you go to the Tokyo Mansion today, she is the one you'll see there. 
Well, with all of these brides, one can't help but wonder who's the lucky man. You won't find much in the ride to tell you that, but in some extra material, you might. The story in Song of the Haunted Mansion LP tells us about the bride and connects her with another character. I'd explain it to you, but I think it's better just to play it. Mike and Karen entered the door and came face to face with a ghost dressed as a bride. She was strangely illuminated and her heart glowed red with each heartbeat. The room they were in was an unfinished attic. And as they turned to run out of the door, another ghostly manifestation appeared and blocked their way. He was a cloaked figure with an evil grinning face. A hat box hung from his hand. With each beat of his bride's heart, his head disappeared from his body and appeared in the hat box. Pay attention to that wording. With each beat of his bride's heart. His bride. Yes, I'm putting forth the idea that the beating heart bride's husband is the hat box ghost. The LP was made to promote the attraction. And, as we all know, the Hatbox Ghost was present on opening day, so I think the Imagineers intended on park goers to make the connection. And again, I said the same thing about Phantom Manor, and we all know how that turned out, so who knows. Just a theory. Moving on from that tangent, in the American Mansions, the bride got yet another overhaul. This time, she was given not just a new face, but a new personality, and finally a name. Constance. Her origins can be traced back to a couple different sources. This art, credited to Mark Davis, depicts a woman leaning against a pillar holding an axe. Though, if you look closely at that marble fixture she's leaning on, oh no, a man is walled up in there. Actually, Mark Davis seemed to be really fond of murderous women, if his concept art is to be believed. And how could I not mention the stretching portrait of the old woman sitting on the tombstone? This was a direct inspiration for Constance's backstory, and the show writers retconned that portrait to be the new bride. So it is that backstory. Constance Hatchaway wanted to be rich, and she'd get her riches through the only means that she could. Marriage. However, even as she married, it wasn't enough. So she kept marrying, and kept marrying, climbing higher and higher on the social ladder. And you know, with each marriage, her husband seemed to just disappear. Ambrose, Frank, the Marquis, Reginald, and of course George, all fell to the same fate. A hatchet to the head. She murdered every single one of her husbands and got away with it, living to an old age. Now in the afterlife, she'll offer herself to any guests that travel through the mansion looking for her next victim. And unlike the other brides, Constance's backstory has been expanded upon in other media. At a dinner event commemorating the mansion's 40th anniversary, it was revealed that Constance killed George the night before her wedding, making it appear as though he jilted her at the altar. But in the afterlife, they were reunited and finally wed together. It was also confirmed that George was indeed the owner of the mansion. As master of the mansion, it is my honor to welcome you to my humble abode. In the Disney Kingdom's comic from Marvel, her backstory makes her out to be not as big of a gold digger as you would think. In her own words, she just likes weddings. She also had a sixth husband on the way, but that wedding never took place. One character speculated that the husband might have killed her. So in this version, karma caught up with her. Of course, this is all from sources outside of the ride, so take it with a grain of salt, but it does add some interesting lore to the story. Now, this leads to an important question. I have referred to Constance and the Beating Heart Bride. I've been referring to them as separate characters, but are they separate? What if they're one and the same? I made a note earlier that the attic scene once had heads popping out of the boxes to say I do. Could those be the bride's husbands? Constance might not have the beating heart, but there is a heartbeat in that scene. And in concept art and a lot of merchandise, she has a beating heart as well. Unless we forget her roommate, the hatbox ghost. A ghost whose head disappears off his shoulders and reappears in his hatbox. Sound familiar? Those with a good eye might have noticed something surrounding him as he stands in the mansion. Other oh, hatboxes. There are at least five of them. Constance had five husbands. That little nudging grin he gives might be hinting at what's in those. And given his history with the attraction, he would know that bride better than anybody. So there seems to be some evidence that they're the same character. Back in 2016, there was something called a ghost post. 
In short, the Ghost Relations Department sent out limited edition boxes to 999 subscribers as a scavenger gun and a game. In a newspaper, the Grim Gazette, there's an advice column from Aunt Agony to ghosts in the mansion. Think, dear Prudence. A lonely ghost reached out to her, lamenting over the isolation in the endless hallway. Auntie responded with the following. You poor thing. I know exactly what you speak of. My attic has fewer ghosts than it used to. We must all work to shoulder the burden of terrifying our guests. This line alludes to the changes that the attic has gone through over the years. Fewer ghosts than it used to? Well, you got the popping up ghosts, and of course the hatbox ghost. So, if they are the same bride... If you haven't guessed, Aunt Agony is implied to be Constance. And if she knows about all those changes, that must mean that she's been there for a while. So perhaps they are the same character. But there are some things contradicting this that might lead people to think that they're different characters. One is that they have a drastically different appearance. If you look between Constance and all the faces of the Beating Heart Bride, there's not much of a resemblance. As I mentioned earlier, Constance doesn't have the physical Beating Heart like that bride did. And their wedding dresses are different. And we still have the Tokyo Bride existing at another mansion at the same time as Constance. Plus, the original Bride is ambiguous enough that she could be anybody who says she has to be Constance. Speaking of ambiguity, on to our last Bride, Melanie. I'll keep this short because I've talked to you off about Phantom Manor so many times already. Melanie had bad luck at love, being engaged to four different men with all of them dying under suspicious circumstances. Possibly by an overprotective father. She found her one true love in a foreman who promised to take her away from her home for good. And with her father dead, she could finally live happily. But she was left standing at the altar, wandering on the manor for the rest of her life, waiting for him to return. Unknown to her, her father had gotten the last laugh, luring him into the attic and killing him. And if that wasn't enough, the ghost of her vengeful father tormented her for the rest of her existence. Yeah, poor girl's been through a lot. Her existence also brings some credence to the idea of multiple attic brides at the American mansions. Because if you look at Melanie, she isn't just another version of her. No matter how hard they try to make it seem like that. If that makes no sense to you, go watch Who is the Phantom Part 2. But, those are our Haunted Mansion brides. Priscilla, Mademoiselle Vampire, The Beating Heart Bride, Constance, and Melanie. Most people would stop there. But you know... Let's keep going and see what else we find. If you're a diehard fan, you might know of something called the Ghost Gallery. This is a collection of stories told by cast members about the characters inside the mansion. Though technically non-canonical, some of the stories have stuck and been used in merchandise and spin-offs. You know how sometimes you'll see merchandise that gives the hitchhiking ghosts names? This is where it comes from. When it comes to the Ghost Gallery, there are actually a few different brides we could talk about. The stretching portrait that we know to be Constance now was named Marriott Gilbert Gracie. She was Master Gracie's mother and killed her first husband, George, after he admitted to having an affair. Speaking of Gracie, his first wife was Lillian, the tightrope girl. However, the attic bride you're thinking of was called Emily Cavanaugh. As a young woman, she met Master Gracie and fell in love with him, becoming his second bride. However, their wedding day never came. In a game of hide-and-seek gone wrong, she hid in a trunk and was locked inside, suffocating in there. Ghost Gallery's kinda grim, not gonna lie. Maybe I'll do a video on it someday. The name Emily ended up kind of sticking. If you talk to a fan about the Beating Heart Bride, they might call her that instead. The SLG comics adopted that name for their version of the character, calling her Emily DeClaire. She was also the wife of Master Gracie, owner of the Haunted Mansion. This was back in the day when everyone thought that Master Gracie and the Ghost Host were one and the same. Good times. Good times. The day of their wedding, Emily searched through the mansion for a wedding gift. You know how the tradition goes. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Well, she went searching in the attic for something old. However, unbeknownst to her, a jealous Madame Leota was summoning spirits to the mansion to put a stop to this. Much like Captain Gore, Gracie had a bloody history as a pirate. Anyway, one of the spirits summoned was Randall Pace. He confronted Emily as she was about to grab a hat box that held something of his. So take a while to guess what that something is. He told her the truth about what her fiancé had done, literally scaring her to death. She remained in the attic for the rest of her existence, alone and looking forlorn out the window. But we're not done yet. In 1995, Disney published a book called Enter If You Dare, Scary Tales from the Haunted Mansion. This book isn't about the actual Haunted Mansion, it's, it's actually from a different house. It's spooky, but it's not our mansion. 
But I still thought it was worth mentioning because it is based on the Haunted Mansion. I was planning on going more in depth with this, but um, the book didn't get here in time for me to make this video, so I'm just going off the wiki summary. So if any details sound incomplete, that's why. However, even though this is not our mansion, there is a bride, Sally Little. Her story is told in Late for the Wedding. The daughter of a wealthy man, she planned to elope, but her father put a stop to it. And it saddened her so much that she died of a broken heart. Her father promised they wouldn't marry over his dead body. And you know what happened when he did die? Her beau just dug up her skeleton out of the grave, and they got married. A little weird, but you know. Maybe there's some vital context I'm missing by just going off a wiki summary. A few years back, DoomBuggies.com produced a story called Nuptial Doom, inspired by the Captain Gore story. Inspired, but not an exact copy of it. I mention this because it was written and performed by Kat Cressida, the voice of Constance, and she based it off her discussions with family who worked for Disney. And you look at the acknowledgements and there are a bunch of big names of Imagineering in there. So as far as I'm concerned, this is fair game. The unnamed bride in this story was the daughter of a nobleman, possibly born out of wedlock. Despite this, she was still pursued by many men, including a former sea captain. However, our sea captain isn't quite as bad as Captain Gore. He's a bit more noble and gentle. When the two met, it was love at first sight, but her father did not approve. That did not stop them, as true love will always prevail, and against all odds, they became engaged. He left on a trip at sea, and she promised to wait for him as long as her heart was beating. I actually don't quite want to spoil this story for you, it's a great listen. I'll link it in the description, it's only 99 cents, so go show him some love. And on that note, we reach our final bride. Elizabeth. She's from the movie. Elizabeth Henshaw was a fiancé of Master Gracie. Though born of different worlds, they grew closer and more and more in love. But, the night of their wedding, she was found dead, seemingly taking her own life. However, she remained, unknown to her grieving beau. Her spirit wandered the mansion endlessly, waiting for someone to discover the truth of what really happened that night. Also, Eddie Murphy needs to stop being such a workaholic dad and spend more time with his family. Yeah, I have some thoughts about that movie, but that's not for this video. But, I think that is just about every single Haunted Mansion bride. Were there any I missed? Genuine question. Uh, I feel like I went pretty in-depth, but there might have been a couple that slipped by me. So, let me know down in the comments. And on that note, who are your favorite Haunted Mansion brides? And what do you think about any of the ones I mentioned in this video? To conclude, I want to give one final happy 50th to the Haunted Mansion. You don't look a day over 49. Happy 50th, Haunted Mansion. Here's to 50 more. However, that's all I had time for today. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care. Thank you.